Hello everyone, this is John Kitchener, personal color and style consultant, speaking to you from my office located near Atlanta, Georgia. And today I've just completed another virtual palette for a client who happens to live in Germany and who could not be here in the office here. I wanted to share this one with you because it is so extensive. This is a really unusually large palette, so vast, many, many, many fabrics. Um, of course, we've always used fabric since we started our business in 1964. Uh, fabric is the best way to see colors. Paint samples and printed samples just don't compare to the quality and depth that fabric can offer. Uh, this is a very, very diverse palette, and I wanted to share with you um, just its <laughs> incredible aspects. And um, the colors are all here divided up into different moods. This is really a very full spectrum analysis. I usually provide about 100 samples for a individual spectrum or individual palette. Uh, in this case, she probably has 160 swatches here. This is very, very extreme. The client has a mix. She's Caucasian. She has a mix of um, lightness, pinkness, peachiness, and a little warmth, a little yellow in her skin, a little bit of layering in her skin, a little blue undertone. She's got, uh, there's a multiplicity in the pigments in her, of her skin. She has green eyes. Uh, leaning towards hazel, so it's the warmer side of green in this case. And she has, I guess what you would say is a, she would have been a strawberry blonde as a child, and her hair has gotten gradually darker, and it has more of a russet feeling now, but it still has a blondness and a redness to it. So she has an incredible, really amazing, incredible diversity uh, within, within her own personal coloring. So what we've got here is, uh, I'm just gonna dis uh, discuss the different moods of the colors and where they fall um, before I discuss the, the variation of what's inherent in the colors. The reds are her romantic colors. These are all sensual, emotional, and for her feminine colors. And uh, they start off with kind of a cherry red going up into a medium red and up into a lighter, warmer red. This is a more of a pink range that goes from uh, rose up into uh, some pinks. This is a salmon range that ver uh, varies right up into coral. So all three could be used for lipstick and blush. Um, there's just so much choice here already um, to see what would happen for the rest of the palette. It's just amazing. She has two pages of orange here, but they both operate differently. Their communications are different. This lighter page of oranges is in what we call the playful range of colors. Now, playful is a more lighthearted, fun, upbeat kind of color to wear. and People often wear it in sportswear. So this lighter page has that playful connotation. This page, which is kind of a darker amber towards rust range, is a sophisticated color for her. So it has less contrast with her coloring. It's a little softer. The playful color actually does more. The yellows, these are a very interesting, diverse range of yellows. They go from a very warm, almost straw color into a butter yellow and then into a banana yellow. And uh, there's not an extensive range here, but what you have here is still quite diverse. Um, beautiful right here. This is also playful. This green, yellow, yellow green range is also playful. It's a lighter quality. Usually the playful colors are on the lighter side of the palette, on the lighter side of the spectrum. And these go from kind of a clover leaf color all the way up into a light green jade color. These four are a cluster together, and that's the greens, blue greens, blues, and Prussian blues. And these four colors actually are her power colors. Now what power, power colors are, they're the complementary color to your complexion. That's what we call them in the art world. A complementary color, if you look at a, at, a, at a color spectrum, is usually the opposite on the color wheel. So these four pages here were more opposite to her coloring. And uh, they, they, uh, the power colors have a kind of an assertive, almost dramatic kind of quality about them. In fact, years ago, we used to call them the dramatic colors. 
The greens begin that range. They are the most assertive effect with her overall coloring. The blue greens are slightly uh, quiet. These are the aquas and teals. These turquoise blues are um, even quieter. And finally, the last page of blues here is her last range of power, and that would be the quieter, more approachable aspect of, of power, but still gives her a very strong credibility. But the greens have the most assertiveness and most commanding aspect. These blues, the second ones over, are more in the royal blue family, and they fall into what we call the sophisticated range. Now keep in mind, one person's power color could be yellow or orange, or it could be blue or purple. It just depends on the individual coloring. So the blue here, this royal blue has an elegant feel. These are great for weddings and, and uh, very uh, wonderful evening events. And then we skip back into playful here. These blues, uh, which go from sky blue up into periwinkle and then periwinkle down into lavender are all playful and lighthearted in their own feeling. And then the last range continues that earlier sophisticated. Uh, these last purples are purple into red purple and um, it's a beautiful, again, elegant range for her. One of the things we also talk about is color combining and how many colors to put together, how much contrast to wear, how much light and dark. Um, do you more, do a more blended look? Do you do a more earthier browned look and that kind of thing? So we really do cover everything that is uh, based on the colors. This wonderful range down here is her eye color range. And these are the colors that pick up the eyes. Um, it could be considered a soft, tranquil color. We call it calm. In fact, years ago, we used to call it the eye extension. But these are these, are these wonderful yellowy-green colors that are found in her eyes. So the eye color, when you wear it, has a calm, peaceful, trustworthy effect. A number of my clients who are in therapeutic positions, they're therapists or psychiatrists, or they're in... Um, some kind of uh, gentle uh, communication in their work with, with uh, clients and others. Um, this is a wonderful color to wear, particularly as a blouse. A man could wear it as a shirt or sweater, uh, so that, that's all possible. So all of these have very different moods just based on the individual. These group of colors here are neutrals, and it begins with the, uh, it goes from a, like a teal down to a deep pine green, and then this beautiful soft blue range into a navy and finally into a very dark blue eggplant, then red eggplant up into burgundy, up into almost a rust range. Um, these are called the understated colors and understated colors have an elegance and a sophistication and they're kind of an alternative to black and black or charcoal. So these are excellent colors for suits, jackets and coats. These colors, these three pages of reserve, not everybody has three pages of reserved, are just wonderful colors. She has a wonderful variation of browns that go from a taupe to a very deep brown, a red brown, and a yellow brown all together. Then picking up her hair color, this was really wonderful to do. Uh, these reserved colors are um, basically camels and butterscotch colors. And this third page of reserved are her range of beiges. All, or, all three of these are very positive. Usually the last reserve page of beiges, uh, I usually recommend away from the faces, pants or skirts, because it's too close to a skin tone. If you wear a color that's close to your skin tone, it tends to wash you out and disempower you. So we don't recommend wearing skin tones. This last range is conservative, and conservative are the grays, blacks and whites. And in this case, she did beautiful warm grays into true grays. Black I put on the side for her. It did not look very strong at her face, and I felt it would be better as a skirt or pants for her. Then we would also discuss how to wear colors with that black, but it's because it's possible to turn yourself into some other color harmony if you put a bright color against black. People will sometimes say, oh, I, I usually don't wear black. I, if, I, if I wear it at all, I'll put a scarf by it, but putting a bright scarf against the black may turn you into a whole another color harmony you may not be. This last range are the creams and antique whites. Uh, not very extensive range of whites here, but they are for a half body amounts, which is a blouse, a jacket, a skirt, or pants. And uh, they're fine. They're just a, you know, a light, uh, comfortable, neutral, 
you know, equivalent of her uh, way of wearing white. So in looking at the overall palette, what we have here, now we don't describe people's colors by seasons. If you go to a person who gives you seasons, they tend to confine everything about that season. And what this is, is a more uh, vastly more open, more holistic approach to the person. So it's a, it's a whole full spectrum color analysis. And of course, extremely custom, obviously, as you can see here. So the overall palette is what we would, um, has a lighter, brighter quality to it, but only about at a 50% um, brightness rate. The, there's another 25%, which has a warmer, deeper, earthier aspect. So any of the warm and deeper colors that are in here are about a quarter of the palette. And each color, each color harmony tempers the other color harmony to make it unique to the person. The other 25% is a subtle blended quality. Um, there's a good uh, softness and coolness in the colors. Um, there's that roseness in those reds again. So she really is warm and cool. And uh, the way it comes out is that she's mostly lively bright, that's the color harmony we described, with 25% earthy rich and 25% subtle blended. So ultimately, this is a marvelous, most practical tool for self-expression. And it's a terrific guide and it will save you so much time and money when you shop. Uh, it's my honor to do these. Uh, I am an artist. I, I have a bachelor's degree in art and I've been doing this work for over 40 years and it is still continuously amazingly satisfying to see this. Um, working with one person at a time and you know the aspect of harmony is so wonderful. When you show up in harmony, think of what you are expressing to the world around you and then what that may do even fuller. So wearing your colors is almost like a peace giving element. So that's a, a wonderful, a wonderful opportunity to create peace on the planet by simply wearing the colors that are right for you. And of course, this includes necklines, prints, patterns, and textures as well, that information, as well as the color combining. So congratulations. I hope you enjoy your colors.